Greetings, Photoshop students. We're going to learn a little bit about Photoshop automation, and it's a lot of fun. We're going to use our actions palette. We're going to learn about creating an action set, record an action, and then automate an entire batch to apply the action that we've recorded to a series of images. Automation can be very helpful if you have um, some repetitive tasks that you find that you're, you're doing over and over again. Or if you have a group of images that you want to do all of the same uh, adjustment to or resizing it to. So automation can be a very powerful tool especially if you have a bunch of images that you want to do the same thing. So I'm going to show you a little bit about getting started, creating your action set in the actions panel, then recording a new action, and then how to automate that action. To begin, you actually need to have a goal in mind. So let's say, for example, I have a, a group of images in a folder that I would like to resize. I'd like them to be all the same basic size or fit within some general size parameters for, let's say I was going to put them all up on the web as part of a portfolio and they needed to have the same width, for example, in order to fit within the parameters required by the online portfolio. So I'd have images to resize in a folder and I also want to set up a target folder where the images will go once I have applied the action to them and have them all resized. So I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it resized. And this is just a little point to remember that it's good to always create a target folder for the images to be placed once you have applied the action. In order to apply an action, I need to actually bring up the actions panel and create an action set and then record my action. Under window and actions, I can bring up the actions panel. I can also have it in my toolbars handy dandy and ready to use so that I can show and hide it very easily. Notice too that Photoshop does provide quite a few um, default actions that come with Adobe Photoshop and these will show you um, you know a, a few things that you could do for example you can create a cast shadow to a series of images or you can create uh, a clipping path or apply sepia toning to a layer. So it comes with some default actions and this is why it's important to not put your action in the default action set. It's important to create your own action set. So let's, in our case, we're going to create, um, we're going to do some resizing. So I'm going to create a new set called resizing. And I can put all of my actions related to resizing in this action set folder. So I created a new folder called resizing. Now I can start by creating a new action. And I can use my drop down menu to select new action. And I'm going to call this first one 320 by 240. Now 320 by 240 is kind of a standard display size for small web images. I am not necessarily going to have all of the images be 240 pixels vertically. So maybe a better name for this action might be 320 width because I can set the parameter to resize all of the images through to 320 pixels wide while constraining the proportions. So the height might be variable depending on my original resource image. And now I'm going to hit record. Record shouldn't be too scary because it doesn't, it do, you don't have to hurry up or do any of these actions right away. And you can always delete certain actions or add additional actions as you're recording. So you don't have to be too frightened about once you've hit record. When you hit record, notice too that the little red record button now shows at the bottom of my actions panel. 
I'm going to start by opening a file. I'm going to open one of my images that I want to resize. So I'm going to choose a sample image and I'm going to open that file. And then I'm going to image, image size, and I'm going to constrain the proportions, but I'm going to resize this image to 320 pixels wide. And in this case, it just happens to also have the height of 240, but remember that height may be variable. We are going to constrain these to a width of 320. And then I'm going to hit OK. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image as a JPEG. Now all of my original source images are already JPEGs, so I don't need to apply additional optimization. They're already pre-optimized in this case. So I'm actually going to File, Save As, I'm going to choose JPEG, I'm going to hit Save, It's going to replace this one sample image, but that's okay. Keeping my baseline set to standard, I'm going to use the same quality of 12. It says large file, but this just means that it's not going to optimize this image any further than it already is. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to save the image. Now I can stop recording my actions. The actions recorded will show opening a file. What we really wanted to record was the image resizing. And if I take this panel off, you can actually see a little bit more detail of the actions. This is the most important action, that the width is set to 320 pixels, and it's constrained the proportions. And then it saved the image as a JPEG with the same quality, no further compression than the original image, because my images to, that I started with are all JPEG images. So in this case, I want to resize the image, but I don't want them to be further compressed. So if I go back here, Remember how I said once you start recording to not be too worried about recording things you don't need? Notice the open action that was recorded. It's opening a specific file. Now if I were to apply this action to a folder of images, it's, it's going to always look for this one specific file and it's going to have this open action every time. What I really w am concerned about is recording of the image resizing and the saving as the full size JPEG image. So I can actually delete this open part of the actions recording. And now I've retained the important points, the image size and the saving as the normal same quality JPEG. So I have this 320 width action that is now recorded and it lives in my resizing action set. I'm now ready to apply these actions to an entire folder of images. So I'm going to close this image here and I'm now going to apply this action to a folder of images. To do that, I'm going to go under File, Automate, Batch. In Automate Batch, I am now able to choose the action set where it lives. We just made it, so it's going to choose the most recent one we made. I'm going to choose the action 320 width. I'm going to select a folder 
and I can now choose the folder of images that I want resized. So if I go into and I can choose the batch folder, I choose images to resize. This is the folder that we want to apply. And it's okay that I've already resized one of the images because it's just going to open it, try to resize it, and since it's already 320 by 240, it really doesn't have to do anything to it, but it's not going to hurt it in any way. So I choose that folder, and I'm going to choose a destination folder. So using the drop-down menu here, I choose a destination folder. And this is going to keep me from overwriting my original files in the cases where it's important that you don't want to overwrite your originals. I'm going to choose that folder that we made called Resized. That's the folder that we created at the very beginning when we were getting set up. I'll choose that. And now I can override the Save As commands. If I override the Save As commands, it's going to override the file name, it's going to override everything that was about that original file, and it's just going to apply the resizing and the JPEG options, but not the Save As steps. So it's not going to save it as a particular file name. It'll just save it as with the same name to our destination folder. And now I'm going to hit OK. And as you can see, it's opening images, resizing them, and applying our action to the images very quickly. You'll be amazed at how quickly that's done. And now we can see our results. If I go to the folder called Resized, you can see that each one of these images has been resized to a width of 320. And you can see each one of these images has been done for us quickly and easily. There's a couple other points I should mention. When you get started into um, applying an action to a series of images and you want to be sure not to overwrite your originals, you can create an additional image, like you can copy an image and you can call it test or something of that nature and you can apply the actions to the test image in that way you can be sure not to overwrite your original image. In the case of this demonstration I applied it to this image and that wasn't a big deal. Um, but it is important to note that if you don't want to anything to occur to your original images it's important to make a copy in order to record your actions. And that concludes the demonstration on how to create an action set, record an action, and apply that action to a folder of images using File, Automate, and Batch.